Hey everyone, John here! And I'm sure a lot of us have a homebrewed Nintendo 3DS, and we use them for different reasons. Originally I homebrewed mine to eliminate region locking, and over the years I found more and more use cases, and so I wanted to share them with you. Whether it's emulating systems that other systems just aren't really the best for, or replacing Nintendo network servers, or whatever else. So here is my essential list of things you must do with your homebrewed Nintendo 3DS. So, for this video, we're going to assume you have a homebrewed 3DS, and if that's the case, you have Luma. Press L, down on the D-pad, and select, and you'll get the Rosalina menu. If you make your way down to Miscellaneous, you will find Input Redirection. But what is this thing? Well, this connects to a PC program called Input Redirection Client QT, and basically, it syncs a controller that's connected to your PC to your 3DS. So suddenly, we're in tabletop mode! Right here, I am using an Xbox controller to play my 3DS games. This feels like it disobeys the laws of nature. And what's especially cool about this is when playing new 3DS games, the second stick on your controller is also the C-stick, and so you can play these games with a fully functioning, fully comfortable, right analog stick. And because my 3DS is hard modded with capture output, I can essentially turn these into docked 3DS games. But let's stick on the control side, this is Rehid. What Rehid does is remap your buttons. You can take any button on the 3DS and say nope, be that one. Or what's really cool is you can take touch inputs and say no, be a button. And so for games like Ocarina of Time 3D, I can take the touch buttons and say no, be a real button, be on the D-pad, lens of truth. And what's seriously cool is with these remappings, we can essentially make a dual analog Kid Icarus uprising. That game supported the Circle Pad Pro, but for left-handed people, it wasn't for dual sticks. Basically, the right stick and the left stick were both move. But with this remapping, in conjunction with some of the control options, we can make a fully featured dual analog Kid Icarus uprising. And it could definitely use some gyro, as this is a very fast game. But regardless, it works. Now back to the Rosalina menu, which is L plus down on the D-pad plus select, any 3DS can take screenshots. Look at this, my beautiful boy Rhythm Thief. You can then go to your SD card and view them in full beautiful quality. And while that's pretty cool, that's not where we're stopping. One application I'd recommend highly is the Universal Updater. This is basically a big free store with a bunch of homebrew on. And through this, you can find NTR custom firmware. This is another layer of custom firmware that's going to allow even more out of your 3DS. And if you're using a new 3DS, this enables video capture. Simply have your 3DS on the same network as your console while using NTR. And on your PC, download the program Snickerstream. And from there, simply connect and your 3DS should be being streamed to your PC. Now, this won't give you the same quality as a hard modded capture unit, but for what it is, free software that allows anyone to capture 3DS games, it works. The quality is not the best and is not being broadcasted in full 60 FPS, but if we were to shrink the display and put it in a 3DS overlay, I think this is fine for people to stream their games with. Now, let's stick with NTR for a moment and talk widgets. This is one that I'm using at the moment, a clock and frame rate overlay. Simply download it from the link in the description, and on your SD card, go to the plugin slash game folder, and put these overlays right there. And now when you boot into a game with the NTR custom firmware, you will get a frame rate counter right over here. And this is just kind of fascinating to see. The bulk of first party 3DS games run really well, just a solid 30 or a solid 60, and it's interesting with the link between worlds, because that game is locked at 60, and it looks incredible. But whenever the screen scrolls, the game kind of pauses for a moment and the frame rate goes way down before going back to 60. But if you were to use fast travel with the broom, that doesn't really happen. So I think those frame drops when the screen transitions is actually intentional rather than just being a technical shortcoming. It also allows us to see that Luigi's Mansion 2 has an unlocked frame rate, so if that game's ever felt weird to you, that is probably why. It goes anywhere between 15 frames per second and around 45 frames per second. But perhaps we could fix it with the next step. We're gonna need a new 3DS for this, so let's go to the Rosalina menu. L, down the D-pad, select. And this time, we're gonna go to new 3DS settings. There's two different toggles here. We're gonna want both of them, enable the core and enable the higher clock speed. 
This may seem intimidating, but don't be afraid, the new 3DS is designed to run like this, so games like Xenoblade Chronicles 3D run like this all the time. And with Luigi's Mansion 2, it makes a bit of a difference. It doesn't exactly drastically change the game, it does still dip in the same areas, but definitely not as much, it runs better with these clock speeds. But there is one game that truly is elevated by these speeds. This is Rayman 3D, and the base game is pretty dreadful. Like Luigi's Mansion 2, this game has an unlocked frame rate, but it barely ever hits 60 and barely ever hits 30. This just runs badly, but if we were to enable these speeds, suddenly we get a locked 60 FPS. This is a game changer. This makes Rayman 3D one of the best versions of Rayman 2, and it was one of the poorest versions of Rayman 2, all because of these new 3DS speeds. Now, these are somewhat experimental. Some games may freeze with these on. Ridge Racer 3D is one that's known to freeze quite a bit, but most games seem absolutely fine. Like Resident Evil The Mercenaries 3D, usually it's dipping around 25 to 30, sometimes lower, but with the clocks on, we're pretty much locked at 30 all the time. And of course, the Pokemon games too. Battle specifically could dip really low, but with these clock speeds on, again, we're pretty much locked at 30, unless we're using 3D, in, in that case, we're still not locked at 30 but it is marginally better. There's also a big list of cheat codes you can put on to make the frame rate even higher for some games. Like, Metal Gear Solid 3D is locked at 20 FPS on 3DS. Yeah, you, you heard that right, locked at 20, it can't go above 20. But using this code, we can force it to go up to 30 FPS, and the new 3DS with these clock speeds can hit that, but if it goes below 30, the entire game slows down, so it's not, it's not very playable. These codes are mostly intended for an emulator and not really for use on console, but you can use them if you want to. And here is a very simple one, Bypass Region. There's lots of really cool games that only released in Japan, or physical editions that only released in America. Like here in Europe, Shimigami Tensei 4 did not come on a cartridge, that was just eShop exclusive, and if you were to buy that now, you'd be out of luck, you'd have to import that game from America. But with custom firmware, you can. Very, very simple. Nintendo Network, across 3DS and Wii U, is about to close. Depending on when you're watching this video, it may already be closed. But we don't have to cry. On Universal Updata, you can find Pretendo. And using the Nimbus application, we can take our 3DS from Nintendo servers to Pretendo servers. And this allows games like Mario Kart 7 to live online indefinitely. Right now, Pretendo is covering games like Kid Icarus Uprising, Mario Kart 7, Steel Diver Sub Wars, Team Kirby Clash, Mario Maker, Triforce Heroes, Pokemon Rumble World, and far more on Wii U as well. There is still some building to be done, and we've done two whole videos covering Pretendo, but this is the future of 3DS and Wii U online. Absolutely essential. And for games like Triforce Heroes, it disables region locking as well, so American people can play with European people and Japanese people. It's, it's a free new world, baby. One really cool thing that 3DS is capable of is playing Game Boy Advance games natively. That's what the Ambassador games were. Basically, because the architecture across 3DS, DS, and GBA is the same, backwards compatibility is very, very easy. Now, Nintendo only ever gave us 10 games officially, and they had a horrible dark filter on them. But of course, people found a way to inject their own games to play with no horrible filter, and this basically gives you perfect Game Boy Advance playback. There's no emulation here, this is being played entirely natively on a 3DS. And if you want to, there's also Open AGB Firm, which doesn't require you to make a whole bunch of injects and install them, and instead just lets you play a list of ROMs. Star Fox 64 3D is an absolutely banging game, but if I had any criticism, it would probably be the audio. I don't think the soundtrack is as strong as the original, and while it's very cool they got the original cast back to reprise their roles, the deliveries just aren't quite as iconic. It's very hard to replace those original lines. And so, we don't have to. We can put the N64 audio back in the game. And because the original uncompressed recordings were found in the Nintendo Giga League, we can even have them in a quality we've never really heard before. Here's how it sounds. Clippy, watch out! Both be on the table! Fox. I they hadn't. Hey, Einstein, I'm on your side. Oh 
Hell yeah, Einstein's canon in the Star Fox universe again. One other great soundtrack mod is Dragon Quest VIII. The PS2 version of this game had a beautiful orchestral score, but the 3DS version is basically better in every other way. There's so many great quality of life improvements, like no random encounters, it's just monsters in the overworld all the time, and battles can be faster. But there's also this horrible MIDI soundtrack. But let's get rid of it. Oh yeah, the MIDI trumpets have been defeated. In this category, we've also got fan translations, taking games that only released in Japan and putting them in English for the very first time. So we've got games like Puyo Puyo Chronicle here, a full-on Puyo Puyo RPG that never surfaced in the West, and it is absolutely bang-ing. In terms of mods that change the entire game, one of the most famous ones is CTGP7. This is a Mario Kart 7 mod that allows custom tracks and custom characters, and this can be played online as well. It's 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 mad. Next up is Virtual Boy Emulation. And I'm sure some people are going, "Oh, well, what a stupid novelty that is." But no, this is so flipping cool. The Virtual Boy had its problems, but those problems weren't software, it was all hardware related. And so when you eliminate that hardware and play them on 3DS, suddenly you can appreciate these games way, way further. Games like Mario Clash, Virtual Boy Wario Land, Vertical Force, Jack Brothers, they all rock. And the best part is, they can be played in stereoscopic 3D. The 3D effect here looks just as good as any sprite-based 3DS game. It was truly ahead of its time in that regard. And we can get rid of the jarring red color scheme and make it any color we want. I really like these games in Cyan, it's just easier to look at and play. This is 3D Movie Viewer, and it basically allows you to take any 3D movie, convert it to MoFlex file, and watch it on your 3DS. So right here, we have Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse being watched in full stereoscopic 3D on the 3DS. Nintendo distributed a few 3D videos themselves, but never full-length movies, so this is just wild to have. Now this is really cool. There are cheat codes that strengthen the 3D effect. So one thing I noticed in Majora's Mask 3D is the 3D effect is pretty weak compared to Ocarina of Time 3D. They just made it much weaker and the depth was way lower, and so, with these cheat codes, we can say, No buddy, I want an entire world living in my 3DS, and we can make it deep as all flip. Of course you can't see this in video, but look how far Link is moving to the right over here. That's how much depth we're getting. How about save states? This is usually a feature for emulators, but we can use it in native 3DS software. So, in Pokemon, if I were to find a shiny, I could save state and ensure that I'm going to capture that thing, there'd be no more risk. Or in a platformer, if there's a very specific jump that's causing a lot of trouble, I can save state and keep returning back to it. Now, let's enhance a bunch of Nintendo DS games. Unfortunately, DS games live in a different sandbox to 3DS, and so we don't have things like the Rosalina menu, and we can't use 3DS features for the most part. However, we can patch them prior with the TW patch. This can make the 3DS's DS scaling look a lot better, but there's also an option for a widescreen hack. This won't really work for 2D games, they just kind of get stretched, but for polygon games, it looks absolutely stunning. But let's not stop there, because there's also cheat codes that enable the circle pad. And by enable the circle pad, I don't just mean putting the D-pad on the circle pad like it is by default, but instead giving these games full analog movement. And for some games, even the C-stick can be used, like Mario 64 DS. And in other games, even Gyro can be used, like in Metro Prime Hunters. We've got a full video on this, please check it out. And our final thing is... Homebrew games. Now, there are some great original pieces of software out there, but I want to focus on a few ports. This one right here is Open Lara, a port of Tomb Raider 1 on the 3DS. And what's really special about this is yes, it's in widescreen, yes, it's 60 FPS, that's, that's great, but also, it's running in stereoscopic 3D. 
This is simply a wonderful way to play the game. I think it's more special than the official release that just happened. And because Tomb Raider is typically a standard definition game, it just looks great on the 3DS's small screen. What, what a brilliant port. But we've also got Super Mario 64. And this is incredibly similar to Open Lara. It's Mario 64, it's 60 FPS, and it is in stereoscopic 3D. I don't need to tell you how cool it is for the pioneer of 3D movement to be in 3D. I always wished we'd get an official port like this on the 3DS, and what we have here is simply majestic. So you've got the option between a native Mario 64 3DS version and an enhanced Mario 64 DS. And our final game is Sonic Mania. Now the load times are pretty long and the special stages don't run particularly well, but general gameplay is near flawless. This unfortunately doesn't have stereoscopic 3D, but for a 3DS version of a 2017 console game, it's just crazy that it runs at all. So, those are the main things that I use a hack system for, but the homebrew scene on 3DS is absolutely massive, so I'm sure I didn't cover absolutely everything. So let me know what you use a hack 3DS for in the comments. Are there any other big things that I didn't list in this video? And because you watched all the way through until the end, it is hot take time. What my new 3DS is wearing right now, this is the sexiest faceplate known to man. The sexiest thing that has Mario, a coin, a boo, and a bullet bill on. This, look at this. <laughs> it's like 3DS is classed up and now bears wood carving. It feels so nice. Like some of these faceplates have like a glossy feel to them, but not this. This feels premium. And for that reason, I always stick with the standard sized new 3DS specifically for this faceplate. It just feels great. It looks good. And if anyone sees you with it, good luck because they're going to want you. Thank you for watching until the end, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everyone.